I'm going to read from a new Jesuit website. Uh, let me give you the address. I got this address from a defecting Jesuit. I mean, this website from a Jesuit who's left the Jesuit order or is trying to get out. Orderofthejesuits.com slash wiki, W-I-K-I slash index dot P-H-P question mark T-I-T-L. Anyways, that's some... Um, their address. Now I'm going to read the Brent Spiner section. The famous actor Brent Spiner is most known for his role as Data in Star Trek The Next Generation. He is not known for much else. Over the years he has attempted stage plays, music, and comedy with varying, usually brief and forgotten success. Throughout the 1990s Brent Spiner began corresponding with Gail by telephone and later created two music albums for her, Old Yellow Eyes is Back and Dreamland. He is the first favorite and most devoted lover bonded to Gail Cord Schuler, and as such has become our next most important target and enemy. In order to completely destroy Gail, we must first completely destroy Brent. The brain-to-brain -brain problem. Currently, Brent Spiner is coordinating communication between Gail, himself, and Vladimir Putin. It is unknown at this time if he is also coordinating communications between other men known or unknown on the marriage list. We must watch Brent closely. He is the thread that ties the three of them together, and they know this as well. Lori McBride insertion. Lori McBride was inserted into Brent's life in the fall of 1992, uh huh, September 1992, when she raped him, to thwart the emotional, psychic, and physical bond to Gail Cord Schuler. Many attempts were made at natural insertions of affection, but failed. Lori McBride was instructed to force an offspring through whatever means necessary. Affections via the creation of offspring were successful. And Gail Kortschuler and Brent Spiner were separated for many years other than brain-to-brain -brain communications. It also created distrust between the two. That's a bunch of bunk. <laughs> There's no distrust between us, though I gotta admit that between about December 96 to about 99, there may have been a little bit of distrust on my, I wouldn't say distrust. Oh, well, anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. Brent and I pretty much trust each other, so that's not really correct. It also created distrust between the two, giving us time to build our underwater city and plan for the nuclear holocaust. Did you hear that? The Jesuits admit themselves that they planned, and you're getting on me? about destroying your infants when you were going to use those infants to build an army to start a nuclear holocaust Jesuits you hypocrites they admit it themselves they were planning a nuclear holocaust I told Vladimir Putin that's why we have to destroy that city because if not we're gonna have a nuclear holocaust it says it right here on the Jesuit website God bless Lori McBride no God curse Lori McBride she's trying to sponsor a nuclear holocaust Career stalls. Even though Lori McBride was successful at stealing away Brent's affections for Gail, he never gave himself over completely, completely to the idea of a life without her. I don't believe that that is a totally correct statement either. Uh, all I can say is maybe from December 96 to 99, it may have been partially true, uh, but I don't think... Brent ever wanted Lori McBride. She tried to seduce Italian film star Franco Nero in December 96 and Brent knew about it and you should have seen the way he looked at her like she was a viper. They've removed those photos from the internet so that is not correct. Brent is fully aware that she's a treacherous woman and he's never wanted her. We threatened him many times and made sure he ended up with a pitiful career so he could not spread anti-Jesuit influence across the globe through his plot platform as a cult hit actor from Star Trek The Next Generation. Now that is correct. They have pretty much sabotaged his career. And he's a very talented actor and doesn't deserve that crap from the Jesuits. Okay, now I'm going to read up on um, some other stuff in here that's kind of interesting. Let's go back to the main page. Um, go into um, operation list. Let's go into germ warfare. 
Candida. They admit that they poisoned me with Candida. What is vaginitis? Vulval, vulval vaginitis can affect women and men on the glands of the penis of all ages and is extremely common. It can be caused by bacteria, yeast, viruses, and other parasites. Some sexually transmitted infections can also cause vulval, vulval vaginitis, as can various chemicals found in bubble bath soaps and perfumes. Environmental factors such as poor hygiene and allergens may also cause this condition. Candida overgrowth. Even when administering to canisters for delivery, you can get candida spores in your mouth, nose, eyes, and other orifices. Please use caution as we have seen in the case of Gale. It can be spread beyond into the oral cavity and stomach if you do not wash your hands often. Practice hygiene at all times. An instrument of warfare. Gail Cord Schuler constant, constantly, constantly blames us, the Jesuits, for her candida vaginitis. Actually, it's not just vaginitis, it's everywhere. But luckily, no one has caught on to the fact that we are able to infect people remotely. This has led to most people believing she has poor hygiene or is a promiscuous person. Vaginitis is a tool we have used throughout time to debase a woman in the eyes of her peers and is so common that it makes a perfect warfare tool against our enemies. Treating vaginitis. Since we have created a superior strain of candida, we of course have the antidote. If you have been infected during the process of filling capsules, air filtration units, or other means of delivery, please seek medical attention at your local conclave. This strain is quite potent and is, yeah, I know, that's the one they infected me with, and is hard to treat unless you use the finest homeopathic cures at our disposal. I would like to say that I have found a homeopathic remedy that seems to be helping me quite a bit with this candida. I certainly wouldn't be dumb enough to follow Lori McBride's advice to use antibiotics to get rid of candida. She's a dodo bird with medicine. Imagine recommending antibiotics to get rid of candida. She must have IQ number five when it comes to how to treat, a, how to treat candida. That's the worst thing you could do. Experimental delivery systems. We are currently working on an experimental delivery system in connection with Operation 40. If you would like to help us test it, please fill out form A-983 and send it to Barnicus. Actually, I don't think Lori McBride is dumb. I think she's just trying to manipulate. She's just a big liar. She just likes to insult me. But, but if she really believes that antibiotics is the way to treat candida, she needs to get her brain checked. She's obviously a medical moron. But then I really don't give a flip what that woman thinks about me anyway. My opinion of her is so low, it doesn't even matter. She's a killer, and she, and she sponsors not nuclear holocausts, and she gets on me for killing babies when the Jesuits themselves admit that they planned on using that underwater city for a nuclear holocaust. Jesuits, and you're going to get on me about killing babies when you plan a nuclear holocaust with that underwater city? You see why we had to nuke it? We don't want a nuclear holocaust up here. Your own website admits it. Bunch of hypocrites. Okay, let's go into some more on this website. Brain-to-brain um, -brain communication. The brain-to-brain -brain communication problem. It appears that only certain genetic subsets are viable for brain to brain, brain communication. This means without the proper neural adaptive technologies, we will never be able to insert misleading communications and cause problems. This problem is being worked on with the BBCD, BBCD Prototype Project. Our illicit technology specialists are currently working on the prototype, which fortunately was evacuated from the underwater city before it was destroyed. A specialized batch of clones are currently being compiled that have an appropriate neural wavelength, approximately 60 joules, J-O-U-L-E-S, at rest metabolic rate to operate the machine. We are hopeful this, that this new strategy will result in success, unlike the other three tries where the brain-to-brain -brain communication device killed the wearer. We lost an important version of Lori McBride and are now just testing the device on non-vital clones. Why brain-to-brain -brain communication must be disrupted? While we can play havoc with Gail Cord Schuler's life by inserting clones into her workplace family life and by bugging her mother's trailer, 
We will never be able, my mother doesn't live in a trailer. We will never be able to break her completely unless we, you say, why do you think they lie every now and then? They lie every now and then on their own website in order to make themselves appear powerful so they don't lose their support. Like I said, a defecting Jesuit is the one who gave me the information about this website, and they don't like that, so they lie so they don't lose their followers. But pretty much they're telling the truth here. We will never be able to break her completely unless we are able to, at the very least, interrupt the brain-to-brain -brain communications she has with the men on her marriage list. How brain-to-brain -brain communication works. When we struck Vladimir Putin in 2005 with a near-fatal heart attack, we were able to briefly scan the brain of Vladimir Putin. Sadly, the agent who usually translates our Russian thoughts was out of the office on vacation, so we had to use his adjutant assistant. A lot of it was jumbled due to his distressed and near-death state, but from what we understand, it has to do with neuropeptides in the brain and their unique genetic profiles. Vladimir only became aware of Gail when she wrote him letters in German that she needed money to move to Germany after 9-11. That's incorrect. He became aware of me right after 9-11 when I noticed him in this on September 25th, 20, um, 2001 in the newspaper. Vladimir wanted to visit Gail when he made his state visit, but was but we thwarted it with threats from the clone Ludmila. Uh, okay. But it is true that it was right after 9-11 that Vladimir Putin and I started our relationship. So... Uh, anyways, you need to check out this website. It's loaded. This one's bigger than the other one, and it's got all sorts of stuff in it.